Intel's got big updates. So their future's luck and bright and heavy. AMD might be scared, but don't worry because uh, their next generation chips are gonna require you to make some big changes to your entire system. And a big change to the hard drive game is here. The fastest hard drive ever created can rival SSDs. Let's get into the hot news, my friends. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on this very here internet. But in case you wanna suggest an article or news topic that you want me to discuss here on Hot News, you can do so over on our Discord server which is linked in the video description for you. Now let's get to talking about Intel because we've got some big details surrounding their seven nanometer Meteor Lake chip, which has now been taped in. Taped in means that everything's ready to go and they're ready to focus on figuring out how they're actually going to produce this chip, which obviously we've heard in the past that they've been moving forward with stuff. And then meanwhile, we've got in 75 generations of 14 nanometers back when Brett was just a wee little lad was when we first got Skylake. But them announcing that seven nanometer taping in of Meteor Lake is a huge advancement with the CEO of Intel saying we've gotten past some of the stumbles at 10 and now seven and the daily updates we're getting on wafers coming out of fab, the full embrace of EUV, we're very confident that we have that back on track. In fact, right now we're taping out the compute tile, the Meteor Lake compute tile is finishing tape in as we speak. So they're ready to go. AMD has their roadmap planned out. Intel is back on the horse after they fell off with 14 nanometers. Okay, they were stuck at that one point in that one game where you're just hitting the roadblock after roadblock, but now they're back. They have new leadership. They're on the path forward. As you can see here, Meteor Lake is expected to come out in 2023. We've got Alder Lake allegedly coming out later this year, going to be Intel's first consumer 10 nanometer chip being brought to the desktop, then Raptor Lake next year. And then following that would be Meteor Lake. And following me talking about Intel is me talking about today's episode sponsor, Synergy. My friends, in case you have multiple devices on your desk area or even in your room or your household and you want to control them remotely, Synergy should be the application that you should look into for that. It allows you to control multiple devices with a single keyboard and mouse across multiple computers, whether that's Linux, Mac, Raspberry Pi, or even Windows, you can get that taken care of via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. You can make it so that you mess with your mom's computer on the other side of the house, or you can make it so that you mess with your brother's computer, or like me, if you have one dedicated work setup and one personal setup, especially for work from home opportunities, it makes it so that you don't have to clutter your desk with multiple peripheral sets, and it makes it seamless so that you can use it, including doing copy and pasting across all of that. Synergy has over 1 million users across the world programmers, designers, gamers, streamers, legacy software users are all common Synergy users. Anyone who uses two devices at one desk can benefit from the software. So you can check it out at the link in the video description. A Synergy basic license is gonna cost you 29 bucks. An SSL encryption for the pro license is gonna be $39. It's affordable, one soft software that can solve a lot of problems that you might be having. Synergy just makes my life so much more convenient with multiple computers just in, in one room. It's great, check them out. And you're gonna have to go to the checkout cart to buy a brand new CPU cooler when Alder Lake drops, allegedly. According to a new report coming out of Igor's lab, he's reporting that there's a new socket. There's also a new size of the CPU package, which makes it one millimeter thinner, which means when you put the CPU cooler down on top of it, it's gonna miss. So you need to get a thicker cooler or a different mounting mechanism. And considering the fact that they're gonna be changing out for socket V, which is what it's being known as, you're going to have to get a new mounting system for it in the first place. Now, this isn't a huge deal. Back when AMD launched their AM4 socket, we had to have all of that done with CPU coolers. Companies like Cooler Master, as well as the rest of them, made it so that you could get a free adapter in case you needed it. Likely that's gonna happen here. Intel has allowed for just multiple generations of socket compatibility. So them transitioning now when they're hitting 10 nanometers isn't such a big deal. They've given us many, many years of socket compatibility. So this doesn't bother me, but it's something that you should be aware of in case you were considering upgrading to Intel. But are you considering upgrading to a hard drive? You want a 14 terabyte hard drive that can run at 524 megabytes 
per second. Yes, my friends, that is the speed of an SSD, what is known to be the fastest hard drive available in the commercial market, the Seagate Mach.2 Exos 2x14 drive with multiple actuators makes it so that it's a speedy boy, at least on the outer platter. Seagate developing this makes it so that it's faster than traditional hard drives. However, it does suffer from that bogging down that obviously any hard drive would since it's a spinning platter and you have a disc head that has to read it. It's not necessarily going to keep up with an SSD in every instance, but in some instances, it's getting close. I remember back when the Velociraptor was the fastest hard drive around spinning at 10,000 RPM going super kerchu. This one only spins at 7,200, but has fancy new technology that makes it slightly faster. And there's fancy new technology that makes Bitcoin go to the moon. You thought the crypto crash yesterday was the end of it. No, my friends, the GameStop Bitcoin update train just keeps on going. Bitcoin up 18% on the day, almost breaking $40,000 again. You thought it was down for the count, didn't you? Wow, you sad, sad person who thinks that Bitcoin is not usable. Domino's, at least one franchise owner of Domino's in the Netherlands has decided that Bitcoin is gonna be good to pay his employees if they want to. They can opt in to a Bitcoin payment system on their Domino's payment. So dang, dope. When's YouTube gonna give us that? But it's not just Bitcoin, the rest of the crypto market going sky high. Ethereum up nearly 30%, up to $2,600. Dogecoin up 21%. It's green everywhere, including GameStop, which is up to 180 at close. 1.82% increase. It's down slightly after market, but never pay attention to aftermarket. You can't trade in that. You're, you're just a normal person. But what does one do with all of these crypto millions that you've got? Well, you invest it into a Peloton factory. At least that's what Peloton is doing with them opening a $400 million dollar factory in Ohio where they're going to make their little pedal bikes as well as the treadmills that kill people. Talked about that in a recent episode of Hot News. They've got a recall because people got killed on their treadmills. So yeah, $400 million more of that. Now let's talk about something that's been going around the internet. Somebody saw a Model Y that was driving with a LiDAR system and companies like The Verge and Bloomberg were just like, hey, Hey, Elon Musk says he hates LiDAR. Why? Why is there a Tesla with LiDAR? This is disgusting. Look at, look at this, a Model Y with LiDAR. That just must mean that they're doing it for testing and developing, and they're gonna go back on the word like they did with Bitcoin. And that means that they're realizing that their vision system for full self-driving isn't gonna work, and they know that it's over. So they're transitioning now. And look at this, the LiDAR setup that's on this Model Y, except for, there was an article back in 2016 that uh, talked about how Tesla uses it for validation against their full self-driving system. So they have Teslas with LiDAR to make sure that they're verifying all of the output for full self-driving because it is useful in limited scope. Elon Musk just said that it's not good for the full scope of everything that you want to do. And he says that LiDAR will create a local maximum that will be hard to get out of, whereas the vision system won't have that. So the fact that they're using LiDAR has been talked about for five years. So good job, Verge. And good job, Tesla, because you got fined $16,000 per person for allegedly violating consumers' rights in Norway for throttling battery charging speeds on Model S vehicles that were made between 2013 and 2015 with a 2019 software update. Customers reported diminished range and slower charging speeds. So a Norwegian court has ruled that Tesla has to pay $16,000 per affected user for the slowed charging rate as well as decreased battery. And according to reports, there's about 10,000 people who purchased the Model S during those periods so that could be a pretty penny for Tesla. They haven't obviously responded to that since they don't have a PR department. So we'll have to wait and see if Tesla actually pays this settlement or not. Apple wants you to pay them and they're gonna show you new things that you can pay them for at WWDC. We now have the dates, June 7th, there you go. Now we know. And now we know why the Surface Duo for Microsoft can be useful. The $1,400 flip phone that once went on sale for $699 and still wasn't worth it can now be used as a gamepad for Xbox Cloud Gaming on xCloud where you can see that the bottom half of it can be the uh, controller triggers thing that what's the thing that you play gamepad you see here at work and where you're able to play video games on the internet using your foldable device this makes sense I'm actually down for this that's I mean 
mean, it seems like a good idea. Doesn't mean you should buy one though. But maybe you can play Netflix games on it because Netflix is reportedly going to be getting into more game services, potentially even expanding one that's like Apple Arcade where you subscribe to them and then they give you games on your mobile device where you can play them on the go. And I'm on the go when it comes to genetic therapy. This is something that I'm obviously very clearly passionate about, especially with my son having a rare genetic disorder. Gene therapy is the way out for him to help him overcome all of his seizures and other just crippling versions of the things that are expressed because of this one disorder. It's one gene that we need to fix. And so when I see articles like this, I celebrate because a man blinded for 40 years has the sight partially restored by using genetic therapy. This particular gene therapy was actually approved by the FDA back in 2017. However, we got a report on a paper yesterday about this particular patient who actually got the optogenetic therapy and made it so that he did have improvements with his eyesight the treatments known as Luxterna, and then when it was applied and he wore special goggles, he was actually able to see nearby objects. He could point and distinguish between multiple different objects, something he couldn't do before getting the treatment. However, he could only do that when he was wearing the goggles and his vision that he did gain back was blurry and limited in range. So it's not a full, like everything's now back and better than it was before. However, it worked right? Like this might not be where the trip stops, but we're on the mountain. We're traveling up. We're getting some sort of progress. Anytime this happens, I celebrate. This is my favorite mug. Okay. This is relevant. Eat, sleep, cure, sing gap one. My friends, we need to cure genetic disorders. Yes, let's go. And you should go watch yesterday's episode of Hot News where we talked about how AMD has got some big plans for their next generation of Zen 4 AM5 stuff. Go watch it. It's a good time. See you tomorrow, friends.